We are very pleased to have with us today Her Worship Mayor Bonnie Crombie. Since first being elected mayor in 2014, Bonnie Crombie has worked diligently to improve the quality of life in Miss for Mississauga residents by holding the line on taxes, investing in improving tra traffic congestion, building regionally connected transit, and attracting major economic development, all the while managing the growth of Canada's seventh, lar seventh largest city, building regionally integrated transit and keeping Mississauga open for business, fostering innovations and creating a more open, engaging and inclusive city have been the mayor's leading priorities since taking office. She looks forward to the opportunity to be the mayor for, for, for the third term should she be reelected by the people of Mississauga. She's proud to have, to have raised her three children, Alex, Jonathan and Natasha. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a quick video before we welcome her, her, her worship, Mayor Bonnie Crombie, to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> bonjour, Anne, bonjour, Wachea, for the lovely smudging and comments from Dr. King. Thank you. I'd like to thank Carolyn King, the former chief of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and inductee to the Order of Canada, for being with us here today and providing opening remarks. Thank you, Dr. King. I also want to start off by welcoming Trevor McPherson to his very first State of the City address, the City of Mississauga. He is, of course, the Mississauga Board of Trade CEO and President, so thank you very much, Trevor, for growing our business community and for the opportunity to once again provide today's address. I also want to acknowledge my dedicated and hardworking council colleagues who are joining us here today. I'm going to read out their names, call them out, and if they could just stand and give a wave, please. Councillor Stephen Dasko from Ward 1. There he is. <laughs> Councillor Chris Fonseca from Ward 3. <laughs> Councillor John Kovac, Ward 4. Councillor Matt Mahoney, Ward 8. And Councillor Pat Sato, Ward 9. There she is. Along with the Council General of Jamaica, Lincoln Downer. And 
of course, our former and very beloved former iconic mayor, the one and only Hurricane Hazel McCallion. <laughs> Now, you've often heard me speak about my family, so I will tell you that as, they, as uh, Jim told you, my three children are here, and why don't they stand up and take a little bow? Children Natasha, Jonathan, and Alex, and my mother Veronica, just give a little, they're too shy, they're right in front here. <laughs> Thank you for your ongoing support. I know they go through a lot with a mother in politics after all. So we are on the heels of the provincial election, and I want to take the opportunity to congratulate Premier Ford on securing a second term, as well as welcoming all six MPPs for successfully reclaiming their seats. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Thank you for being a strong voice for Mississauga at Queen's Park. I also want to thank our generous event sponsors today, and of course, nothing we achieve here in Mississauga would be possible without our dedicated and passionate team at the City of Mississauga, and of course, the Region Appeal, who are committed to excellence and to serving our residents and local businesses. In Mississauga, we are led by our City Manager, Paul Mitchum, and his team of commissioners and staff, including Chief Rizzi, and I think Chief Duria, uh, Duria, Dupera, <laughs> Nish Duriapa is here with us today, who have stepped up big time over the past two years to ensure that we didn't skip a beat and we kept our city moving. I see the CAO of the Region Appeal, Janice Baker, is here with us and some of her commissioners as well. So let's hear it for the staff that drive our city and the Region of Peel. And I also see our Director of Economic Development, Bonnie Brown, and her entire team for not only supporting Mississauga's business community, but for charting them on a path to recovery during what was, without a doubt, one of the most challenging chapters in our city's history. Please give a wave to the EDO team. So Mississauga, it's been a while. Uh-huh. How are we all doing today? It's fantastic. Fantastic to all come together in one room after two years. It's hard to believe it, but it's been over two years since we were last here together in one room to celebrate our great city and our promising future. We couldn't have done this without each and every one of you. The sacrifices you made personally and the changes you made to the way you do business are keeping us healthy and safe. I know many of, of us are tired of hearing the word pivot, nimble, unprecedented, am I right? But the reality is that businesses have not faced so much uncertainty in generations. Thanks to your resilience, your drive, and your passion, our city is coming out of this pandemic, not only surviving, but thriving. And I am proud to stand before you today to say that the state of our city is strong. We face the future, not with fear, but with confidence. And that's thanks in large part to the strong and steady leadership of our council, the city, and our regional staff, our healthcare heroes, our police officers, our firefighters, they're all here today too, our paramedics, our transit drivers, and of course, members of our business community. Thanks to you, we are officially on the road to recovery and there is no turning back. Mississauga is building toward a new future, one that takes into account the lessons learned these past two years, and strives to make our city a place where everyone can succeed. While COVID no longer dominates our daily lives, remember how consumed we were with the daily case counts and ICU counts, how many people were getting vaccinated? I remember those days so well. But we can't forget that the Region Appeal was one of the hardest hit communities in the country. 
Getting to where we are today wasn't easy. You may remember we had to fight our share for our fair share of the vaccine. Remember that? We had, set, we, we are 20, we had 23% of the cases, we we're 11% of the population, and in the first go around, we got 7% of the vaccine. That was a struggle. And I was happy to lead that charge, along with the very unflappable Dr. Lawrence Lowe. Let's hear it for Dr. Lowe. And to ensure our economy continued to run, we had food on our tables and we had goods at our door. Thanks to the nearly 90% of Peel residents who were fully vaccinated, we are in a much better position today, which is why I encourage each and every one of you to keep your vaccines up to date, you too, mom, and get your second booster dose when you are eligible. I did. It's the best protection you can provide yourself and your loved ones. Now, COVID was not the only challenge we faced these past two years. Affordability and the cost of living have skyrocketed, further deepening the inequality in our community. The price of gas has soared. Inflation is at a 40-year high, and housing is out of reach for far too many. We have seen more severe and unprecedented weather events brought on by climate change that are damaging our communities. Across the country, it's getting harder and harder for people to make ends meet. Despite these challenges, our business community continues to step up and prove that Mississauga is a city that cares. We will continue to have each other's backs because it is what Mississauga is all about, helping others in times of need. Last year, during the Mayor's Thanksgiving food drive, we raised over $650,000 and over 370,000 pounds of food, a record high in a pandemic year. And that is thanks to the generosity of businesses like VentureX, Lakeview Community Partners, floors at work, among so many others that we're able to not only meet, meet, but exceed our goals. And when the war erupted in Ukraine, companies like Sodi did not sit idly by. They kick-started a fundraising campaign to match donations up to $50,000 in support of the Red Cross. Amazon also stepped up with two significant $125,000 donations to the Seva Food Bank and Indus Community Services to support a new seniors hub and a new community kitchen. These are only a few examples of the generosity that we have seen from our city's business community who, despite having their own challenges, have done extraordinary things for our city. While we are all ready to put this behind us and move forward, our economy will continue to feel its impact for years to come. Like your businesses, our city's finances were also hit very hard. At one point, we faced a $100 million deficit. Two thirds of this was due to low ridership on my way which at one point was at 25% of our normal ridership. We are thankful to the provincial and the federal governments for the over $156 million in support <laughs> to help us offset those shortfalls, particularly in transit. But you know, they still aren't enough. As a city, we are doing what is in everything, in our power and in our pocketbook to make a difference. As you know, cities can't run deficits. We're not allowed to legally. And we're not in the position to provide incentives to businesses, not in the same way the provincial and the federal levels of government can. But our council took decisive action and tightened our belts, passing a lean budget that kept taxes at the rate of inflation 
instituted temporary hiring freezes and reduced our discretionary costs to, the lower, to lower that forecasted deficit. And despite all of this, we're still facing a $50 million deficit this year, and we continue to call on higher orders of government for their support. We all know recovery won't happen overnight, but we're on the right path, and I'm confident that if we continue to sharpen our pencils, deliver responsible budgets, and ensure our voices are heard, we will soon be back in the black. I know many of you are facing similar challenges, and I want to commend you for your re resiliency, your courage, and your commitment to doing business in the city of Mississauga. As Canada's seventh largest city, we have our eyes firmly on the future. We are embracing our urban shift in order to future-proof our economy and build a resilient city of the future. We must apply an innovation and sustainability lens to everything we do. The good news is that Mississauga is already a leader on many of these fronts. And this is why I'm so confident we're well positioned to excel in a post-pandemic world. We've been working for years to foster an innovation ecosystem in Mississauga, to cement our position as an innovation hub on the Toronto-Waterloo Tech Corridor and put ourselves on the map as a global magnet for innovative business, research, and academics. A city capable of competing with the Tokyos, the Tel Avivs, the San Francisco's, the Beijing's, and the Bangalore's of the world. A place where entrepreneurs and startups want to invest, want to scale up, and will thrive. And it all starts with an idea. Idea Mississauga, where the future is being invented. We will live and breathe innovation in every corner of the city and in everything we do. We will create an innovation ecosystem with hubs across the city that will not only help entrepreneurs come up with the big ideas, but commercialize them and bring them to market. It will be the cornerstone and the catalyst in helping Mississauga maintain our global competitiveness. Innovation lives in Mississauga. It is also the key in helping us grow and diversify our business community. As the second largest employment hub in the GTA and home to over 98,000 businesses, Mississauga is already an economic powerhouse. In fact, we are home to over half a million jobs and growing. Over the past two years, despite the pandemic, we gained nearly 13,000 new net jobs through new investment and business expansion. That is incredible. During a pandemic, since becoming mayor, I'm very proud to say that we have seen the number of businesses in our city rise by nearly 13,500. And in the last year alone, our business community grew, this is in one year, by over 2,000 new businesses, thanks to the hard work of our economic development and our city team. We welcomed global heavyweights like Bombardier, who are about to open a new state-of-the-art, energy-efficient manufacturing center at the airport, focused on the final assembly of their global aircraft that will create, are you ready? 2,000 highly skilled jobs. This, yes. <laughs> This $400 million private investment strengthens our robust aerospace sector and further leverages our larger advanced manufacturing supply chain with nearly 90 Mississauga businesses supporting their work, generating over $250 million in economic spin-off 
each year. We also saw a boom of pandemic entrepreneurs as a result of shifting consumer trends and gaps in the market. Businesses like Boomerang FX, who took a chance and agreed the timing was right to launch their business and invest in our city. Capitalizing on the digital shift with their AI software that helps small healthcare practitioners grow their business by identifying and converting leads into new customers. With plans already well underway to expand their presence and open a new office next month, business is certainly booming for this company. Unfortunately, the pandemic also exposed some pretty significant gaps in Canada's ability to produce life-saving vaccines and therapeutic drugs here at home, which is why many of our life sciences companies are turning their sights to improving our pandemic preparedness so we can better respond to future health emergencies while strengthening our economy. Thanks to a nearly $200 million investment from the federal government, Resilience Biotechnologies is doing just that, expanding operations and boosting their capacity to manufacture hundreds of millions of doses of mRNA vaccines and therapeutics used to fight COVID-19 while creating 200 highly skilled local jobs right here in Mississauga. We, yes. we also saw homegrown microbics expand, opening a third facility, which has allowed them to scale up and fully automate the production of testing vials used to collect PCR and rapid antigen tests. In addition to life sciences, another sector that also saw a seismic shift was fintech, particularly e-commerce, of course, and online retail, <laughs> which has doubled year over year since the onset of the pandemic. We were thrilled to welcome Intelcom to our city a logistics company with a 24-7 state-of-the-art facility capable of sending out over 500,000 packages a day for last mile delivery to homes across our city and beyond. As we have seen these past few years, having a digital presence is critical for many businesses to survive. So is shopping and buying local to support our local economy. And thanks to Digital Service Squad, our, uh, we supported over 600 small businesses to market and sell their products online. And this is um, a Mississauga group, Digital Services Squad, right at our city hall. Businesses like Lishkara Fabrics in Cooksville, who, thanks to the squad, revamped their website and social media presence translating into a big boost in their online sales. We also saw 1,000 small businesses participate in our Shop Local campaign called Mississauga Made to promote locally made products, businesses, and tourism experiences across our great city. Whether your business suffered or flourished during COVID, we are here with the supports you need to build back to better and to thrive. I encourage everyone to continue to show their support for small businesses most impacted by the lockdowns, as well as some of the larger sectors like the airline industry and the wider aerospace supply chain who are slowly recovering. Tens of thousands of Mississauga residents work at Pearson Airport and over 30,000 in our aerospace sector, the largest in Ontario. These are highly skilled, good paying jobs that are essential to the health of our local economy and our people. At their lowest point, passenger traffic at Pearson Airport was down 96%. As a result, many lost their jobs. The good news is that passenger travel is on the rise again. But Pearson needs our patience 
as they work to ramp up, hire new staff, train them to get back up to full speed. In fact, I was at the airport just last week with MBOD and Tourism Mississauga, our new tourism marketing organization, with representation from many business and industry partners here with us today to mark Tourism Week and urge the federal government on both sides of the border to address the issues slowing down travelers as they make their way through the airport. Thanks to partnerships like these, we are well positioned to support the recovery and the growth of our tourism and hospitality sector while putting Mississauga's best foot forward for visitor, visitors and businesses. I want to thank the federal government for their investments to date to boost Pearson's economic competitiveness and ensure they have the resources they need to get back to business as usual. We will continue to support our partners at Toronto Pearson to pave the way for clear skies. Because when Pearson succeeds, Mississauga thrives. In the next 30 years, Mississauga will soar to new heights. We will grow exponentially and be home to more than 1 million people and 600,000 jobs. Becoming a global hub for innovation and talent won't be possible unless we have a strong plan in place to accommodate this growth by building dynamic, complete, and interconnected communities. Our competitive advantage has been and will continue to be our quality of life here in Mississauga. A city with roads, sidewalks, bridges, community centers, splash pads, rinks, parks, all in good working order. As we know, this all comes with a price tag. As a city, we simply don't have the fiscal tools at our disposal to maintain 60% of the country's infrastructure, which all cities do, but receive only 10% of every tax dollar collected, which is why we need committed partners to fund the critical projects Mississauga needs as we transform into a city of the future. Rest assured, Council has been knocking, texting, meeting, calling, Zooming, WebExing, whatever, with all levels of government to secure unprecedented investments for our city. And frankly, during the pandemic, we saw both levels of government work together to get the job done across party lines to deliver for cities and for our people. And I'd like to see that continue. In fact, by working together, nearly $8 billion in funding has flowed to Mississauga since I became mayor almost eight years ago. It is thanks to strong partnerships that we can get shovels in the ground, maintain our critical infrastructure, and build the transit we need to get people moving across Mississauga and beyond. Earlier this year, we saw just that, all three levels of government standing proudly together to announce over $675 million in funding to support three critical transit projects in Mississauga. Funding that will help get shovels in the ground for the first stretch of the bus rapid transit along Dundas Street between Cooksville and the Toronto border, along with purchasing over 350 new hybrid electric buses to help us reach our climate change goals. This was a team effort and demonstrates that big things can happen when all orders of government unite in a vision to create strong and healthy communities. Seamless, regionally integrated transit will help us meet our climate change goals, get people out of their cars and get them to work on time. We are working to retrofit suburbia which I assure you is no easy task. With 70% of all trips in Mississauga done in a vehicle, the car remains king. But as mayor, I've made it my mandate to change this by continuing to make transit affordable, convenient, and seamless. 
Since taking office, we have increased transit service by over 300,000 service hours. Working, thank you, working with... We're working with the province. We are making transit more affordable by eliminating double fares when connecting from Go Transit to My Way. We're also working to green our fleet, a crucial step in reducing our carbon footprint. And as a city, we have stopped buying diesel buses and will only purchase hybrid, electric, or zero emissions vehicles moving forward because we know green energy is the way of the future. I'm proud of the work that we've done to take 11,700 cars off the road, reducing 58,000 tons of CO2. Less cars, more transit. This is the way of the future. And starting this year, we will roll out 165 new hybrid electric buses and by 2024, we will have greened nearly half of our fleet. We're also proud to be exploring an innovative hydrogen fuel cell electric bus pilot with industry partners, Qtric, the first of its kind in Canada. Mississauga will be leaders in the hydrogen economy. Investments like these are critical in helping us achieve our climate change targets an 80% reduction in GHGs by 2050, with the goal of one day becoming net zero. We continue to make progress on building a regionally integrated transportation network that connects people to jobs and opportunity. Construction is already well underway on the Hazel McCallion LRT, a $4.6 billion provincial investment secured by this council. Just last month, I was out to see the progress as crews started to lay the tracks. I have to admit, I got a little bit emotional. This is by far the largest infrastructure project in our city's history and is truly incredible to see it finally coming to life. I remember the day I got the call from the province to say it had been approved. The progress made to date is remarkable. And I want to thank our businesses for their patience and understanding as we navigate construction and work together to build this critical infrastructure. Short-term pain for long-term gain. I can't underscore enough how important the LRT is to our future prosperity. It's an absolute magnet for jobs and in the next 20 years will support over a quarter of all employment in Mississauga along that corridor. And those numbers will only continue to climb as our downtown develops into a thriving economic center within the GTA. The problem is there's one thing missing to unlock its full potential, the downtown loop. In the next decade, our downtown will be home to 50 new high-rises that will be home to nearly 70,000 people and support over 30,000 jobs. That's over double what it is today. And we will need to quickly and efficiently move people to and around our downtown. Without the loop, the future vision of our downtown as a livable, walkable, transit-friendly urban hub is at stake. I know Premier Ford is focused on solutions and getting the job done. He's been publicly supportive of restoring the loop. And now that he's been reelected, I will be once again knocking on his door. The LRT is essential to our future economic success, your success, which is why I'm asking you to join us in our efforts to help us get it funded. Please, if you're speaking to the Premier or any of the Cabinet Ministers, tell them how vital the downtown loop is. So we can ensure that Mississauga continues to import, not export, talent. Pre-pandemic, we had more than 230,000 people a day coming to work to our city from neighboring areas like Toronto, Halton, and York. And while we recognize that a hybrid workplace is here to stay, 
We will continue to support your employees, the talent you need to grow your businesses, to travel quickly and efficiently to the office. We realize some areas of our city are hard to reach by transit right now, and we are working to change that. Which is why I was thrilled when both levels of government stepped up to fund a study to extend the Eglinton Crosstown to our airport corporate center and eventually Toronto Pearson, seamlessly linking riders from across the GTHA to the second largest employment zone in the entire region. I will also continue to press the province to match the 50% of the funding committed by the federal government last summer to make all-day two-way GO train transit service on the Milton Line a reality. It is the second busiest GO transit corridor, seeing over 3 million riders a year, supporting 77,000 jobs and intersects with the LRT and is within one kilometer of the future Dundas BRT, making it two-way all day and electrifying the track as has been done on so many other GO Transit lines just makes good business sense. It would help employees at hundreds of businesses in Meadowvale, like Nova Nordisk, easily commute into and out of downtown Toronto and every stop along the way. Right now, they can literally see the station from their headquarters, but it's of no use to their employees. Instead, dozens have no choice but to drive their cars to work each day. If we are serious about breaking gridlock, meeting our climate change goals, and unlocking our economic potential, the provincial government must make this a priority. And as mayor, I will ensure our voices and that of our business community are heard loud and clear. These projects will help us build the regionally connected transit network we need to move people more efficiently, connect them to jobs, prosperity, and drive the development of complete communities in our downtown, south along here, Ontario, and all the way down to Lake Ontario. By far, the biggest transformation is happening in our downtown core. Construction is already underway on 31 new high-rises. The face of the Square One area will change as we know it today. As retail involves, evolves, they will have much more to offer than just shopping and dining. In fact, Square One area will proudly be home to our Anchor Innovation District, Idea Mississauga, which will open later this year a dedicated working space for entrepreneurs and startups to network, to dream big, and to come up with innovative ideas that will drive investment and change the future of our city. Sheridan College's Edge Entrepreneurship Hub and their Center for Advanced Manufacturing and Design Technologies, along with UTM's iCube, will also be part of our network and will support thousands of entrepreneurs, change makers, and small business owners who are contributing to a green recovery. Companies like Ecosystem Informatics and Hope Pet Foods, who thanks to The Edge are balancing the triple bottom line of people, planet, and profit. Over time, the Square One District, the largest mixed-use development in Canadian history in the heart of the downtown, will grow by one new building every year until they reach 37. Just south of Square One, the Exchange District will be a hub for culture, art, and local food with a focus on sustainability. Thanks to an innovative partnership with Diverso Energy, the district will be home to the tallest geothermal condo building in Canada at 66 stories high, saving our environment and residents in energy costs. This project dovetails nicely with our city's broader efforts to advance low carbon district energy in the downtown. We are proud to be partnering to study how we can use geothermal and waste heat to heat and cool key buildings like City Hall, the Living Arts Centre, 
and of course, the Hazel McCallion Central Library. We are greening our future one building at a time and slowly changing the face of the downtown Mississauga for the better. We are truly embracing our urban shift up, not out. Smart, sustainable growth, fewer cars, less congestion and air pollution, more connections, a world-class center for innovation, more transit, mobility, accessibility, green spaces, bike lanes, office space, business, jobs, and opportunity. Now that's something to get really excited about. Our efforts to build complete communities extend well beyond our downtown. With the LRT on the horizon, here Ontario is poised to grow and to change. In the coming years, we anticipate 12,000 new housing units and over 128,000 jobs to be created along the corridor. We have a vision to support that growth, a vision that will build walkable, transit-oriented, 15-minute cities along here, Ontario, from the downtown Cooksville to Fairview to Trillium Health Partners in the south. More walking, biking, or cruising, green trails that will connect you to downtown Cooksville, home to the future Dundas BRT and LRT. Keep traveling south and you will arrive outside the new state-of-the-art, 24-story, 950-bed Peter Gilgan Mississauga Hospital, the largest and most innovative hospital anywhere in Canada. <laughs> and it will serve our growing and diverse community for decades to come while creating good, high-paying, highly skilled local jobs. Not too far south, 250 acres of prime waterfront is transforming into cutting-edge, innovative, sustainable communities that will bring the people to the water and the water to the people. Cleaning up an old oil refinery and a coal-fired power plant, we are righting the wrongs of our industrial past, reinvigorating and renewing these lands and charting a better future for generations to come. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We will get this right because we can't afford not to. The Lakeview and Brightwater developments will put Mississauga's waterfront on the map as an international destination, much like Chicago, Vancouver, and New Orleans. Both mixed-use communities have a focus on low-impact development and will be using the latest technologies to save energy, reduce pollution, and encourage transit-friendly walkable communities that will connect people to the water and get cars off the road. To the, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> to the eastern edge of Lakeview, work is nearly three quarters complete at the Jim Tovey Conservation Area, a 26 hectare of waterfront conservation park, a true urban green oasis and for the first time in 60 years, Searson Creek has been reconnected to the lake and fish can swim up and down it freely. What was once a lost creek buried underground has been restored to its former glory. We are literally breathing life back into our waterfront. And at the same time, we're proud to be partnering with Lakeview to create a resilient, low-carbon, community-scale district energy, the largest supply of clean energy in Mississauga that will help us get closer to achieving our net zero goals. That's not the only cutting-edge project happening at Lakeview. Progress is also being made to plan a state-of-the-art innovation district on the waterfront. Idea Lakeview, which will be home to our city's second innovation hub. 
a 1.5 million square foot of flexible co-share office space with views of the waterfront that will put Mississauga on the map and one day support 9,000 highly skilled jobs in the key sectors we're investing in, in growing, life sciences, clean tech, and ICT. A magnet for entrepreneurs and high-tech giants alike. It will increase our competitiveness as a global innovation hub and will be the catalyst in our post-pandemic recovery. Ensuring Mississauga remains a net importer of diverse, highly skilled jobs for decades to come. And a beacon for tourism and entertainment with plans underway to animate a 500-foot pier, the longest on this side of the Great Lakes, that will be the shining jewel of the GTA waterfront and an international destination. To the west, what were once renderings are now coming to life with construction already underway at Bridgewater. In fact, I was on site just a few weeks back to see how it is progressing and learn more about their first and last mile shuttle that will connect residents to the Port Credit Go and one day the Huron Ontario LRT and the Lakeshore BRT. They're also exploring e-scooters and e-bikes to make it easier for people to connect to transit or reach their final destination while reducing congestion and pollution. This is also something that Mississauga is exploring through our micro-mobility pilot with plans to launch it next summer. Through these green initiatives and more, Brightwater is poised to become a model for cutting edge urban sustainability and smart city development. While our focus on innovation and sustainability will be key in driving our economic recovery, we cannot forget about the importance of investing in the driving force behind it, our creative industries. Bar none, creativity is the underlying force that spurs innovation. Our ability to foster and harness our creative power will be critical in driving our economic prosperity from attracting new business investment and top talent to creating the groundwork and ecosystem for innovation to thrive. We've also heard loud and clear from our business community that we need to jumpstart our city's cool factor to make Mississauga an even more attractive place to live and work for Gen Zers and future generations. We are making strategic investments in arts and culture and they're paying off. Helping us land Studio Bottega, a 500,000 square foot studio complex that once built will create more than 8,000 jobs in the film industry from producers to lighting technicians, set designers, and more. This investment alone is in the hundreds of millions of dollars, bringing us to a total of nine film studios officially solidifying Mississauga as Hollywood North. <laughs> Offset, Mississauga continues to dominate the GTA as a key location and backdrop for shows such as Kids in the Hall and Shadow Hunters, which is why despite COVID, our film office experienced a significant boom in revenue and over 35% increase from pre-pandemic levels. Lights, camera, action, all eyes are on Mississauga. We're also working to drop a pin on the map and gain a reputation <laughs> as a music city, don't look at that, notwithstanding me. <laughs> With the launch of our first ever music strategy, Mississauga is poised to be an internationally recognized incubator for top music talent and a national destination for live music events and festivals, creating jobs creating jobs, fueling tourism, and drawing people back to our city. 
Our strategy could not come at a better time as the industry works to recover, with live music sales dropping 92% during the pandemic. Our local artists and all the wider industry who supports them need our help to reignite the live music scene here in Mississauga. Music will breathe life into our city and help us further expand our innovation ecosystem across Mississauga. We are already laying the foundation thanks to a groundbreaking, first of its kind partnership between Metalworks and Laurier University that will see students get the hands-on studio experience they need while earning credits towards their music degree. Congrats to them too. And one day I hope a center of excellence for music or an amphitheater, a place where emerging artists, recording engineers and producers can collaborate, perform and bring Mississauga talent to the world. As we advance our efforts to make Mississauga a city of the future, we cannot ignore the real challenges before us. As a city, we are taking firm action to address the housing affordability crisis sweeping our province. I know keeping Mississauga affordable is, is also important to our business community. But the reality is prices are still out of reach for many with the average home price north of a million dollars. And that's why it's so important that housing is not left out of the conversation when we're talking about future prosperity of our city. It must be front and center of everything we do. We realize there are no easy solutions to cooling the market. We must think differently and we must work together. We are doing what is within our jurisdiction to solve the problem by bringing supply to the market quickly and speeding up approvals and protecting the rental supply. Last year in the midst of the pandemic, our team didn't skip a beat. We issued a record $2.1 billion in building permits. And I assure you, this was no easy task, especially not during a pandemic. We also have approved pre-zoning for over 60,000 units, which means we have the supply that can have shovels in the ground and be brought to market quickly. Cities are not the bottleneck in the development pipeline. I look forward to talking to the new Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing about how we can partner to ensure that the next generation has access to housing by better supporting first-time home buyers and protecting the existing rental stock. I'm proud that by working with our development community, we have secured a commitment to build 600 affordable units in Mississauga in just the last two years. I'd like to see this trend continue. It's also important that when we build, we're bringing the right supply, the right kind of supply to the market. Units that are suitably sized, and by that I mean large enough for families and the many seniors who are overhoused and looking to downsize. We are reimagining our malls and exploring new housing options like garden suites, lot splitting, duplexes, towns, and gar garden conversions. It's not enough to welcome people to our city with open arms. We need to help lay the foundations to ensure that everyone who wants to live in our city can afford to do so. For our city to thrive, people must have a safe, affordable place to live. Everyone has a role to play in solving this affordability crisis. But, it's not just the rising cost of housing that contributed to the deepening inequality in our community. Communities across the country struggled with a decline in mental health and drug addiction, a rise in intolerance, hate crimes, and political polarization. With successive lockdowns, many lost their jobs. We saw a deepening of wage inequality and barriers to re-entering the workforce especially for women. Many who work in sectors like tourism, hospitality, and personal care that were heavily impacted by the lockdowns. This is not the Mississauga that we know. 
In order for economic recovery to be inclusive, we must do more to advance our equity and our diversity efforts. It must be ingrained in everything we do from the very start, and I encourage our business community to do the same. As a city, we will not drive prosperity at the risk of leaving others behind, and we will not be afraid to address our shortcomings and commit to doing better, which is why we are actively working to break down barriers to ensure that everyone has an equal opportunity to succeed and thrive in Mississauga. We need to support women to provide opportunities for them to re-enter the workforce. And I'm confident that $10 a day childcare, which I urge both levels of government to implement, will help get us one step closer. I also know that our business community is also doing their part to increase representation of women and other equity-seeking groups in the workplace. The city is proud to be partnering with companies like GSK, Sanofi, Interception, and Roche in our life sciences sector through the Equity and Diversity Collaborative to actively help tip the scales in the right direction. As a corporation, we're also working to build a more diverse and inclusive workforce, permanently raising the Every Child Matter flag at City Hall and the Pride Progress flag in the month of June. Partnering with Nova Nordisk and UTM, Mississauga signed onto the Urban Diabetes Declaration to help tackle type 2 diabetes and develop innovative local solutions to this rising health issue in our community. We're also taking historic steps to ensure members of Mississauga's black community have more of a say in the decision-making process at, this, at City Hall and feel more included, supported, and empowered. We have a lot of work to do ahead of us, but with your support and that of our broader community, we will ensure our city is not just one of the most diverse, but one of the most inclusive cities in the world. We can achieve this together. Mississauga is quickly approaching our 50th anniversary. We're almost 50 years old. It's time to pause and reflect on where we want to go and who we want to be. We are no longer a young suburban city. We are emerging as an innovative, sustainable city of the future. And that's thanks to the innovative partnerships and commitment to working together to build vibrant and dynamic communities that are the envy of the world. Communities that attract businesses and highly skilled, diverse talent to the city and to keep them right here. We will have growing pains and face the same pressures as established urban cities around the world do. But you have my word that we will continue to maintain our commitment to excellence while working to keep money in your pocket. Strong, steady leadership is what has gotten us through the pandemic and what will guide us into the future. As we look at the year ahead and beyond, I know there is more to do and more to achieve, which is why it would be an absolute honor to be your mayor for another term. So that... <laughs> So that we can forge ahead together as partners to build a more prosperous and inclusive city of the future so that we can build back better with you and for you. Mississauga, we have arrived. The future is ours for the taking. Let's do this. Thank you.